Hey mamas, it's Tori from Mommy Bar and I'm here with a Chats at the Mommy Bar or Mom's Chats at the Bar, still experimenting with the title. But I have Lynn Turcotte Shu here with me today. She's from Happy Mama Wellness. She's a childbirth educator, parenting mentor, children's book author, baby sign instructor, and she created Happy Mama Wellness where she helps moms and partners prepare for their new roles um, and break through parenting challenges and operate at their highest potential. Uh, I'm really excited for you to hear our interview about childbirth prep, um, all the different options there are, kind of mind, body, health, wellness, and relaxation, and how that can affect birth and postpartum, and then just some fun stuff along the way. So without further ado, here she is. All right. Hi, Lynn. Thanks so much for joining me here on um, our mommy chat at the bar or whatever this is going to be called. I haven't quite <laughs> narrowed it down yet. Um, but this is Lynn from Happy Mama Wellness, and I'm very excited to have you here to chat with everyone. And can you tell us a little bit about Happy Mama Wellness and how you started it and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, my mission at Happy Mama Wellness is to help new families. I, I always look at you and then the camera, so I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. Um, to help new families navigate both the challenges and the joys of bringing their babies into the world and then parenting them once they are here. Um, so the way that that happened was kind of organically. I ironically was a marine mammal trainer for over 10 years. Oh, wow. Um, before I became a mom. <laughs> And we were about eight or 10 weeks into the maternity leave. And I was like, I can't go back. Like, I can't put my baby in daycare. I can't let someone else raise her. I, I need to be at home. Um, but I need to be contributing to our family as well. So um, I got certified as a childbirth educator first. Um, and I had started to teach in the hospitals. And that kind of brought in some extra money. And it's something that I was super passionate about because uh, I had such an amazing experience birthing my own daughter. Um, and then the parenting stuff kind of organically grew from there as my daughter got older and I was starting to like hit some of the struggles of parenting. I realized that my brain was still wired to train or teach the way that it I did with the animals. <laughs> and so uh, that's how I parented and um, my parenting course is just kind of that topic, teaching parents how to teach rather than discipline. So everything kind of like organically grew as my daughter's got older. So I'm kind of excited to see what's next because it's just kind of been evolving as we, as I evolve as a mom, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me then, so you see lots of pregnant women and then m moms after they've had their child. So what are some of the most common questions or fears that you get um, from moms when they come to you with questions? Yeah, that is a, that's a great question. Um, I will, I'll focus the fears part on the childbirth because that definitely seems to be more <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Um, I, when moms, especially first time moms, um, come to me, they're for sure, there's some like trigger words for them, right? That like just sends them into overdrive. And usually those words are the pain right? They're thinking about all of the horror stories and pain that they see on TV and that people have told them about. Um, also, the word tearing seems to be like a <laughs> hot button trigger word. Um, so I'm always really trying to help moms understand that the tearing is very minor the large majority of the time. Most of the time you don't even feel it because of all the mechanics that are happening, pushing the baby out. But the pain in general, pain in childbirth is very different than everyday life pain because your body is giving you so many tools during that specific experience that it doesn't give you in regular life. So there's lots of coping mechanisms, hormones that are getting released. And so even though those are like the fear mongers, it really doesn't need to be like that. I think it's a lack of knowledge and understanding really that leads to that. But the pain and the tearing seem to be the big <laughs> triggers for moms. <laughs> I'm surprised, actually, because I don't really remember. I may have blocked it out. But 
in childbirth classes and just reading books and things. And I seem to recall in the mommy classes or mommy groups that I went to, that wasn't something like we knew about beforehand. So that people are actually coming to you with that question is, so yes. I'm just surprised and I don't know, it depends on maybe what OB you go to or things like that, so. Yeah, I think it's more the horror stories. Like, you know, like I'll be talking to, to a mom in a class or moms, groups of moms, and um, they'll be like, okay, but what about the tearing? Like, how do I make it not happen? Or like, how do, like, what is, they? and they do the like, that kind of base to like, and um, it, it's very surprising to me as well. But uh, if it is for sure a common threat, that word for some reason, it's like, it makes them just, <laughs> understandably so. But again, the, the lack of understanding about what's actually happening, I think it's more of an imagination running wild type of scenario. Right. <laughs> so then, I mean, this, I've learned this, um, but for the moms who are listening or moms to be who are listening are there things that you teach in childbirth classes or different methods or at positions i know positions have a big are a big part of um how much pressure and how your body is and if there is the minimal tearing or lots or none that type of stuff so please tell us about that yeah absolutely <laughs> um so there, there are things you can do to help prevent tears. Um, and really the biggest one is in mom's control. So when mom is pushing the baby out, up until the part where their head is starting to like be seen by the people on the outside, you're like pushing with every fiber of your being, right? Like if you remember what it was like to push that baby out, like you're using muscles and energy that you didn't even know you had in your body. <laughs> You're like, I don't know where this is coming from, but this is what's happening. And if you can get out of that zone, as the baby's coming out over that perineum, which is like the opening mm -hmm. out through, and then that tissue underneath, that's where the tear will happen. You can kind of ease up and let them slowly come out over that part. It allows that tissue to stretch. And, and that is what will help to prevent the tear is that slow like kind of easing them out over that tissue instead of the popping which i know sounds like a horrible <laughs> visual but that's where the tear comes from um but a lot of practitioners now will do perineal massage so they'll literally like just take some oil and they'll massage that tissue with the oil and the way that i like in the winter when your lips are chapped and you yawn or you stretch them like you can feel it almost cracking and burning and so if you can keep that perineum or the perineal area more moist, it will stretch better as well. It will stretch with less cracking and less burning. Um, so those are the two big things that you can actually do to help prevent them. It might not prevent 100%, but it will for sure minimize them. And sometimes it can completely prevent it from happening altogether. So those are two pretty good tips about um, things that you can do like in the moment to help things. <laughs> so with that um, massage, I remember reading and I've read this other times while you're pregnant, mm. but then there's been conflicting, you know, sides of that is that it has nothing to do with it or it's like the only thing that saves you. So what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I have found that especially with um, research or evidence on pregnancy and birth and parenting even, um, you, if you look, will find incontrovertible evidence on two completely opposing sides and you're left in the middle like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I tend to um, personally follow the guideline, if it can't hurt, but it might help, like why not? <laughs> So the perineal massage during pregnancy, there doesn't seem to be any negative side effects. So if it's possible that it could help, like why not try it? That's kind of the zone that I live in. Just okay. Still, as a parent, drive yourself crazy with all the research. I mean, literally, like one thing will say push this way, another thing will say don't push at all, and like they both have really good studies backing them up. It just makes your head spin for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, so 
going back to what you said about kind of relaxing after baby has crowned. Yeah. Um, so to try, try to avoid some of that. What, so that's something that you go over with your classes and what are some things that you recommend for women and their partners or their birth coaches, whomever to kind of train their body to do that? Cause I know that's one of the, like you're saying, that's one of the reasons. And because you just want to keep pushing, 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 pushing yeah. is how are you going to push, 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 and then like fight that <laughs> to stop all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> um, it for sure starts with mental like it's a mental thing and practice. Um, Sorry, that's a... so it's right. Uh, you might be able to hear my child stomping upstairs. So we're we're real moms when we do this, right? Yes. But, um, <laughs> and she um, opened the door on her own. So yeah, all good. Um, so practicing is super important. And when I say practice, I mean like not only practicing physical stuff like fitness type things, which we, you know, I, I'm sure you have a lot of information on this front when I bring it up in a second, but um, there are some specific muscle groups that you can work that will help with the, all of this. Um, but just practicing the mental state and how to relax your body, not in that moment. So it almost becomes like a Pavlovian reflex, an automatic response oh, I'm hearing this music and my partner is in this position and they're rubbing my back or rubbing my head, like all of this chain then says to your body, oh, we're doing this now. We're relaxing now and it almost becomes automatic. Um, but specifically for that part where you're gonna tr kind of ease up and relax that, that area, that pelvic floor, um, that is very difficult to do. And so the more kegels you do, the, the, not necessarily just the kegel, but the stronger your pelvic floor is going in, the more control you have over those muscles, you not only will be able to recover faster on the way out because you've built up that strength, but the opposite is really important too in the learning to relax it on cue, right? Like, like with our biceps, we can contract and relax. Like we have that ability, but it's hard to think about that concept with your pelvic floor, but you can obtain the same control there. Um, and so having that control to, to tighten it or, you know, strengthen it on cue, but also the other way to relax yeah. it on cue <laughs> by you saying, I'm going to relax this muscle now that can really change the whole course of your, your pushing and help you to have that nice easing out at the end there because you will say <laughs> um you know you can just tell your body okay relax relax all these muscles they just kind of melt and baby just comes out right right oh my goodness and that's that's actually ties in because that's why i love teaching the breathing um and like the diaphrag diaphragmatic breathing um which i just did i was just <laughs> doing in a class the other day um, just because it's, you're basically learning how to breathe again to help with all those muscles, to engage them, to relax them. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of people, I mean, I even learned it more so after having my son, yeah. um, but to learn it now again, while pregnant, redoing it because your muscles are completely different. They kind of forget how to work together. They don't really connect like they did before. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously that breathing and those not just those kegels, but I, what I love to tell moms and moms to be is, it's the kegel, but it's also the squeeze in your transverse abdominals because it's yeah. all working together. Yeah. And that's what you really need to have an effective like stabilization, support, everything. So yeah, but sure. that you are telling that to moms yeah, as well. Absolutely. And I, I usually use that term kegel because that's what like everybody knows that right. term. But it is, it's all connected. You know, the cable is just one muscle down there, but like all the muscles in the pelvic girdle and the lower, like it's all connected, like you said. Um, but the cable seems to be, again, another trigger word. Like I'm like, oh, I know what that means. Right. <laughs> well, but then that's uh, just a little off topic, but no, going not. into that as well is there's not just a kegel, you have to learn to use all of the muscles down there in that figure yeah. eight, because yeah. most of the time in all of like the pregnancy books that I read and everything that really just 
subscribed except for more in-depth pre and postnatal training books. Um, a Kegel is to stop the flow of urine. It's not anything else. And if those can be too strong in your back, pelvic floor muscles can be too weak. And really for birth, you need the back ones more so than just yep. the front ones. So Absolutely. yeah, that's, I just love to <laughs> teach that. So. Absolutely. Well, cause I think, um, and I don't know where this comes from, but, and I was in this place too, so I'm not like ragging on new moms, but we don't even understand our, our own body. Like we don't understand the biology, the physiology, um, especially the course of labor and birth and pre like we, we just aren't taught it. And so it's kind of like, you're like, hurry up and learn this stuff. Cause kids come in <laughs> and you're like, right. Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> it is. And I mean, I had an upper hand, I think because I danced for, 20 years. So I was, I'm, I've always been like feeling the muscles. I like to do that where that's so foreign to most people. And then trying to explain that is a little difficult. So yes. So tell us more about with reducing the anxiety of gone into that and kind of like partner or coach assisted. Um, you went and talked a little bit about that with, um, you know, cueing yourself, you're cueing mom to relax. Yeah. But what other things like throughout pregnancy can a partner be doing or working with like a doula be doing to assist mom for that big moment of birth? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, we were just kind of talking about physical relaxation. There's three types of relaxation. There's mental, emotional, and physical. And the physical is great but there is no way that you will achieve the physical unless you get the mental and emotional first. So um, the way I like to describe this is, is essentially that your, your thoughts have, have power over you that you don't even understand, right? So um, there's this thing called the fear, tension, pain cycle. And essentially, I, when I'm teaching in class, I have them envision something outside of her. So um, I usually people are like afraid of spiders, <laughs> right? Spiders are snakes. They're usually two things that come up. So I'll set up the scenario and I'll say, okay, let's pretend I met you outside of this classroom. And I said, thank you for being here. I'm so glad that you're with us today. Just wanted to let you know we had a small spider infestation yesterday. You know, the people have come, they've sprayed, everything looks good. But if you see or feel a spider, please let me know so I can alert the right people, right? And so now that's the mindset that you're going into this room with. And then I always ask people, what is happening to your body outside of a classroom? And I get answers like, I'm not coming in the classroom. I'm going home. <laughs> like, we'll reschedule for another day. Um, but then we start getting the ingredient I'm looking for, which is my heart rate's going up. My breathing is rate is increasing, and it's coming up into my chest. I might be feeling a little nauseous, like I'm getting tense because I'm getting nervous. And we talk about the fact that all of those are signs that your body's going into fight or flight, right? That adrenaline is spiking and getting you ready to either run away for your life or stand and like defend your life. And I always bring them back to in this scenario, has anyone even seen a spider? And the answer is no. And so all of those real physiologic things, those real stressors are coming from you thinking there could be <laughs> something that could hurt you or you thinking there could be something bad coming. And so it just illustrates the fact that you could have all the best intentions in the world. You could be like a yoga guru from a physical relaxation standpoint, but if your mind is not in the right place, if you're not relaxed and kind of getting out of your head, none of that matters because you're still going to set yourself off into this adrenaline cycle. And by the way, adrenaline spikes can stop your labor in, in, the, in its tracks. You can literally stop your labor by having an adrenaline spike and getting in this fear cycle. Oh, wow. See, I, yeah. I know you wrote that, but I was, that's very interesting. <laughs> So there's four main hormones of labor. Adrenaline is one of them. Adrenaline's job in very simplistic terms at the end, right before we're about to push, is to tell our body, okay, we're about to start pushing. Clear out all of these um, endorphins, which are your pain, natural painkillers. Get mom ready. Give her a burst of energy and make her clear-headed so she can push this baby out. 
So when it happens earlier in labor, it does the same thing. It like clears out all of these natural painkillers. It like stops all of the hormones of labor because it thinks it's time to now switch gears. You don't start pushing because other things have to happen first, um, but it for sure will just stop everything right then and there. It, it, it takes only 20, 30 minutes to get it back going if you can relax, but it has a huge impact. So really the biggest thing for a coach or a partner to do is keep mom out of that cycle. Like keep her out of her head, keep her mentally and emotionally relaxed. And then usually she can do the physical part pretty well on her own if she's practiced. So um, mental and emotional relaxation stuff is like um, just the, I call coaches, I call partners coaches <laughs> because you're coaching, right? You're like giving pep talks, you're giving encouragement, you're keeping mom hydrated. As an athlete, that's really important to stay hydrated. Um, reminding her what, you know, what's happening. Um, some moms are really really um, responsive to like a guided meditation or even just um, guided affirmation type things. Like if mom's having a really hard contraction, just telling her if that contraction is hard as a rock, make it crumble into sand. Like just giving her like visual things. All of that stuff, as long as she's not thinking about the pain, or I don't even like to use the word pain. I like to use the word intensity. Um, if she's not thinking about the intensity directly and not worrying about what might come up in the future, as long as those two things are not happening, she will be good to go. And so the coach's job is to not let her think of those two things, really. <laughs> and that starts in pregnancy. It really does, because the lower your stress, and there are tons of studies on this, but the lower your stress hormones are in pregnancy, the more calm, relaxed, like easy going your baby will be because they're getting all of those hormones in utero. So they can either come out nice and chill or they can come out a ball of stress. And like you have some control over that. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, that, that was just, a long winded answer. But no, that was good. And, but it just brought up, that's what I was, I was writing down. Um, just making sure I had names right and to try to kind of pronounce them, but there'll be a couple interviews with, um, Parijat, Parijat Deshpande, and she wrote Pregnancy Brain, and it is all about, it's really focused on, um, what's it called, high-risk pregnancies yeah. and reducing stress, but I was reading it because I was having crazy anxiety in my first trimester, and just I was like, well, but this, of course, applies to everybody, and loved it, and she has a mental health um, background, and then also Ariana Tabuada, and she works with kind of maternity planning or um, maternity leave planning, as well as just assisting moms throughout. Um, and the same thing, um, mental health background, worked in all of these different amazing um, like healthcare mom child things, and and I think and we talk about the same same exact thing. So absolutely. yeah, absolutely. It, and it doesn't, the stress doesn't go away postpartum, right? So like right. The, the earlier you can find techniques to help you manage it and work through it, the better everyone's going to be. And because then you can teach your child that there are, these are good ways to breathe. Like when you feel stressed or anxious, you can breathe, you can center yourself. Like you're, if you master them yourself, then you teach them to your kids. And that's an amazing parenting strategy down the road. Yes. Sure. I like that a lot. <laughs> Um, so I tell us, is there any, are there any other tips or things you'd like to leave us with and tell us how we can stay in touch with you, um, to learn more, you know, um, oh, I, one, sorry, one other question <laughs> was, um, do you have a favorite childbirth method? Because there's so many out there. Yeah. Which one aligns the most with kind of getting your mental into physical all of that stuff because where's a mom going to know to start when there's 20 different options being thrown at her? Yeah, for sure. Um, it is overwhelming is like not even a proper term. I don't even know something that's more overwhelming than overwhelming. <laughs> that's what it feels like to weed through all of these childbirth classes. And I'm saying that having one of my own, like I know I'm just adding to that in some ways by having this other option. 
Um, but I think there are a couple of, I have a favorite that I will, I will for sure speak to in a second, but when you're trying to weed through stuff, um, the, there's a couple really important things. Number one is to make sure that the instructor is actually certified. So like there are some people that will say, oh, I'm teaching private classes and they've not been certified. They've just had six kids, which not to discount that experience, but there's a lot more um, that goes into it than just your own experience. Like you, it's more, it really is an academic type training. So just making sure that your instructor is certified in anything it's <laughs> really important right yes um, i'm very uh, yeah and that's, it's different for different people some people want that just more experiential learning um but even i love experiential learning but i want to always make sure that there's evidence behind it just i'm exactly. like, like that science part of it and to exactly. show <laughs> how yeah. it is so I, it's a good well, point and part of that too is that everyone's gonna be different so if this person's not certified to teach you all the options and then help you kind of navigate through those to find what's right for you, then they're just gonna teach you how they gave birth. And that might not be the right way for you to give birth. So um, it's just really super important that they are certified in something. Um, the second thing is that a really good childbirth class or method is going to talk about the end of pregnancy um, and pre-labor, which is like all the things your body's doing to prepare, is going to talk you through all of the different stages of labor, what's happening, why it's happening, how to cope with it, what mom might be feeling, what coach could do, like coach should be incorporated in that, all of that stuff. Um, and then also you should have the ability within that same program to learn um, newborn care, postpartum care for mom, um, breastfeeding basics, not necessarily like a really in-depth course, but um, basics on breastfeeding. Um, and you might, I said within a program, because if you're in a hospital class, you might have to sign up for two or three different classes, but they're all in the same place with the same instructors. So like, that's kind of why I say it like that. Um, and then the other thing to consider is being realistic about your time and your schedule. I always, always encourage that mom bring her coach with her or do the class with the coach because it really is a partnership. Like you've got to learn to work as a well-oiled machine in order for all of this to run smoothly. You, you have to, you have very different roles, but equally as important in my view. Like you need, you need that support person there to help keep you on track. So if you work days and your partner works nights, like that's an issue. If you, you know, so it was very hard for us because right? my husband was on days and nights and it rotated and yes. yes. So, um, so that logistically, if you look at those, just those three things, number one, is the person certified? Number two, is it encompassing all of these things that I really should be learning? And number three, will it work with my schedule? That alone is going to weed out like three quarters of the programs that are out there. Um, and so from what's left, now you can say, okay, what kind of birth am I looking for? It, I always encourage people to write birth plans, but I then tell them it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> like that's the one right thing mine and I it can was... give you, <laughs> that it will not happen that way. But what it does is it gets everyone set out on the same path, like on the same journey with the same goal in mind. Um, and so if you are like, I know that I want to be in the hospital, I know that I, I want to get an epidural, but I just want all of this other background information. Well, you're going to be drawn to a very different class than someone who wants to do a home birth and is preparing for a home birth. So I think if you get those three key points down, narrow it to just maybe three or four, then you can see which matches your vision better. And you've got all the good stuff, right? You've got the certified instructor, you've got all the things you need to know and your coach is involved. So from there, it's going to be different for each person. Um, and I feel like just in the past, my son's four, so five-ish years, there in my area, there's been a uh, like blossoming of many different options. Whereas before I felt like it was only, or all that I knew about was just the hospital classes. That's what we took. And just timing wise was very difficult. 
Um, but now the hospital offers regular, their prepared childbirth and also hypnobirthing, which when I was taking classes, that was like a weird thing. That was like, yes. you know, you go to like, just somebody else teaches that or you read the book. So it is, and I love now that like this online, like your classes are online, that would have been so much easier and presents timing um, and scheduling conflicts kind of go out the door with that. Um, so like now there's, it, it is hard because it's a little anxiety provoking because there are so many options. But like you said, if mom um, goes through that list and then finds it, then you can narrow it down. And there's really still so many great options available that will fit their, you know, style. Yeah, for sure. And um, for, how am I trying to say this? <laughs> I don't want to, I got certified in the Bradley method. Um, and uh, because that's the class that we settled on. Uh, when I was pregnant, like, because I, I remember just, again, my, my daughter would be five in November, so five years ago, I was, like, with all of these other moms. <laughs> I was not this smart back then. I was yeah. being overwhelmed with by all of these classes, and what drew me to them um, was the, in, I called the instructor. I, I recommend that to you. My, my class, the curriculum is online, but I on purpose made a six week live portion where people have access to me on email, on Facebook. We do like this Zoom call, you know, live coaching where you're asking me questions and seeing my face and hearing my voice. Because I think that is a really crucial component to feel like you have a real person in your corner supporting you that you could call on the drop of a dime. <laughs> but I think that having that uh, is really, really important. And so that's why I kind of made a hybrid. I didn't want just online. Um, but what drew me to Bradley was the fact that I called the instructor and I said, listen, I want to have a home birth. My wife and my family just staged an intervention and told me I was going to kill my baby if I had a home birth. This is literally what happened. Like, I remember you telling me yeah. this before and it's like, like I forgot. And then, yes. yes. So I mean that like, this is, can't make it up better than this um and so I said how do I have a home a home birth like birth in the hospital like will this course give that to me what I'm reading online it seems like it will and the instructor actually talked to me for almost 30 minutes and answered my questions and that's what was like okay because she said to me this is the curriculum the curriculum is great but this is some extra stuff that I'll do on top of it and this is my background and where I'm coming from I was like perfect we are like in alignment um, so because that we went through that Bradley course, that was my first certification that I got. And I love the Bradley method. I love the curriculum. Um, every, it's a 12 week course though. So it's two and a half hours every week for 12 weeks. You go to your instructor's house and oh, wow. take a childbirth class. But that one, it's very partner. Yes. Coaching focus, partner, right? Right. Yes. So that's the other reason that I love it. Everything is you and your partner working together. And each week there's a different relaxation exercise. So you go home with like a huge list of things to draw from. Um, so I really love the completeness of that course. Um, but I will be honest, I'm actually letting my certification run out at the end of this year because I'm just not getting the people to sign up like I was. I'm not filling my classes. And I really want to be able to focus on this hybrid class because I feel like I can reach more people and help more moms, right? So I love, love that method. Um, but I think the scheduling is just an issue for so many people that I wanted to really focus my time on bringing that background, like that expertise that I have right. taught that curriculum and been in that mind, that headspace for almost five years now. Um, but just kind of into a different, a different organization realm, if you will. Right. Um, I love, love Bradley. Love it. I absolutely recommend it for any, any moms, but it is a time commitment. Like it is a long, <laughs> it's three, it's the last three months of your pregnancy, basically. Right. It's a long thing. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Like there's some great courses out there, but if you and your, your partner are on opposite schedules, like Bradley's not going to work for you. So 
just kind of weeding things down like that. Um, yeah, so that's my personal preference, um, but there's lots of other really great curriculums out there, so I'm not knocking any of those for sure. I just, I, I want to reiterate that again, that I love that you're saying, you know, weed out what doesn't work, look into it, call the instructor, see if it fits with like your style. Because again, I'm this from my experience, I feel like there wasn't, it's like, there's a class at the hospital, that's what you take. And, yeah. you know, there are so many other options that if that doesn't fit your style, you know, try, look for something different. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, for sure, like, call, like I mean, I'm saying this for me. I think it should be for all classes. If you're looking at a class, call me. Call the instructor. Because I'm one that's, like, I am very gentle. I, I have, I'm, I'm gently assertive, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat things, but I'm going to say it in a really kind and loving and supportive way. Other people might not like that, like your personality, you might need someone that's like a drill sergeant to like keep you <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So um, don't be afraid to do that. It's a, this is a really big experience, finding someone that will support you so you can start, have a good start to your journey. That's where I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah. There you go, right? All right, so tell us how we can stay in touch with you. Yeah, so um, I have a website that has pretty much everything is on there. You might have to navigate through a bit, but um, it's happymamawellness.com, and mama is M-A-M-A. -A. Yeah, and I'll have a link below the video interview yeah. in the description. Um, but outside of that, uh, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram, so if you're on either of those social media platforms, um, and so there are links there to get to my two signature program made easy -er. <laughs> my mom was like you spelled that wrong I was like no I didn't because I wanted it to be childbirth made easy and I was like no that's not ever gonna happen that's a big bold face lie so easy -er. <laughs> I like that yes <laughs> um so there are links to that and the how to train your toddler that's my parenting program um and you can get that from the website or from Facebook or Instagram. But those are the, I'm not a big on like Snapchat or those other, I'm old, I'm 40. Like that's for the younger kids. <laughs> so Facebook and Instagram are the better places to find me. <laughs> okay. And you had mentioned you have a five day challenge coming up. Yes. Yeah. When is so, that? Because absolutely. I don't, I want to make sure that it is after this airs. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, so the childbirth class is on a rolling thing so if you register for the childbirth class you get instant access to the online curriculum and then every six weeks I start a new live session so you're just kind of put into whatever the next live session is after you register the parenting program is very different I only open that up um, two to three times a year and it's a three month chunk it's a 90 day um, program awesome. and hello perfect timing <laughs> Like, thank, beautiful. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been a really fun conversation. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today for this mommy chat at the bar. Um, make sure you subscribe to our channel here so you get updates of the latest quick tips, exercise videos, and interviews, and informational things that we post on here. And tell us what you think. If you have questions, make comment, put them in the comments below. All right, and I'll, the links to all of uh, Lynn's information is in the description below, as well as links to your mommy bar uh, classes, sessions, and fun things. All right, I'll see you next time.